What is up guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is David Hamlin, aka The Laptop Legend, and in today's day trading session, I made $755. I was up $1,300, but gave back a lot towards the end, so I've got some really good lessons from that. Uh, that I want to share with you because it kind of relates back to an earlier lesson that I talked about But it's a variation on that so it's very important uh, for you guys to learn from my mistakes so You don't make it yourself and uh, kind of more interestingly we had a huge huge runner day up I, I forget what the max was I got to double check over 500 600 700 maybe 800 percent max on the day absolutely insane maybe over a thousand i gotta check again but just a crazy runner so i want to talk about the lessons from this one uh and basically you know how you can spot these runners and know to know when to hold them know when to fold them etc so hopefully this video will be helpful i'm trying to make this a little bit faster because I had some people say that, you know, maybe if I make shorter videos, it'll perform better in the algorithm and reach more people. So that's the goal with this one, trying to make it, you know, maybe 10 minutes long, something like that. So we'll see. So hopefully you find it helpful. If you smash the, the thumbs up, leave a comment down below for me saying, I don't know, pool noodles or something like that. And uh, subscribe, you know, drill. Let's do it. All right, guys. So this is the chart for INVU. And this is what it looked like yesterday. And this is actually a chart. It's a screenshot that I posted inside the discord saying that I wanted to short this stock if it broke under this 62 support area. And uh, I did that today and made some nice money shorting this all day long. And I just want to have this as a perfect example because this stock was up a lot. It was up from pretty much 11 cents without any type of red day all the way up to 80 cents. And in this market, uh, where everything is failing, that is really, really overextended and it's very likely to pull back more. So even though it had its first red day, which I also made money shorting, uh, failed to break back green and close near the low of the day, it means it's pretty likely this thing is gonna see a big dump when it breaks under this support level where A, it opened right here, it bounced here once and bounced here again. So that, that, that's proven to be a pretty good support level. Again, that's right at like 62 cents. And uh, again, I, I said I wanted to short that and I did. And here's what the chart today looks like. So if I zoom in a little bit more, you can see uh, when it broke that line there, that's that that's that line right there at 62 cents. When it broke that line, it saw a nice dump and it just faded off all day long, man. It faded off all day long. Let me see if I can get this to be a few more days. Maybe go four days. That's a little better. So again, this is what it looked like guys. And uh, I ended up shorting this again pretty much all day long. So I got short here for the dump uh, when it broke through this support area covered down here. And uh, then it was, it was consolidating this area. Could not get back above that 62 cent area. I should have gone short again, but I did not. I missed this and it came down here broke under low of day and uh, I reshorted into this bounce and then just kept making money on the short side on this thing. It could not bounce at all uh, until right towards the end here, guys. And this is where I need to be a little bit more careful, but this reminds me of the lesson that I had. I think it was on ICBU, I don't know, a month ago, two months ago, where a stock that is up a lot if it starts tanking really hard, imagine these are red candles. If it does that right into close, it does not need to bounce. It does not need to bounce. Now, if you see a chart like this and uh, it's the middle of the day or something, this is definitely gonna fail and see a pullback at some point. So you can be a little bit more confident shorting into this. But on a stock that is down from now 79 cents uh, all the way down to 43 cents, I mean, that's a really big pullback. And I mean, there were pretty much no real bounces today. So I should have known to be a little bit more careful. And I was a little too aggressive shorting into this, uh, not thinking about the fact that the market was closing soon and it didn't have to dip, which reminds me again of ICBU when the stock was up a ton on the day and then started tanking into close. And it pretty much had red candles that looked like this. So it went pretty much straight down into close. I dip bought, it kept selling off. And I'm thinking, man, this thing has to bounce. But then market closed and I got screwed. So make sure that when you guys have a stock that is either up a lot and starts tanking right towards close or down a lot and starts spiking right towards close, it does not need to reverse. So just be very careful. Be very careful because there's not time for it to reverse and you can't you can't count on the waiting game when there's no time to wait. So that's pretty much my biggest takeaway from this one. Uh, besides, you know, obviously the fact that you guys really need to be looking into uh, shorting stocks that are breaking past key resistance points, especially on days like today because every chart, again, just felt so, so heavy today. Everything just felt so heavy. And uh, the only real thing that moved at all um, was, let me pull it up. I totally forget the name real quick. Um, yeah, so the only stock that moved at all today was this one that went absolutely insane. So if I pull it up, RT, 
B, no, RGPB, RGPB. This stock went bananas, absolutely bananas. And I love to see it. I love to see any type of stock have this type of momentum uh, on a day when everything seems like it's failing in a market when everything seems like it's failing. So you can see this stock guys, absolutely not so. So this thing was 002 yesterday and reached a high of up a thousand percent on the day, which is nuts. Absolutely nuts. Yeah, I mean, it was 002 to 02. So that's up a thousand percent on the day. Now you look at this chart and I mean, I think, I think in the discord, we alerted it. Uh, I think it was down when it was only up like 200%. So, I mean, that's down like here. And I mean, you see this, this still looks like it's kind of overextended, man. I mean, this is, this is up from two all the way up to all the way up to eight. And you're thinking in this market, like, my goodness, man, this is, this is very likely to fail. I don't really want to chase this with any type of size. But the way that you know to chase it is again, I've talked about this fact before, when stocks display incredible strength and keep making higher highs and higher lows, keep pulling an uptrend, never break down and make a lower low or a lower high, that's how you know you should get in on a dip and uh, risk it making a lower low. And it's, it's, it's a really, really good strategy. And you can be a little bit more patient on stocks like this where they just keep going up no matter what because it's, it's, it's honestly crazy, man. It's honestly crazy. So if I zoom out a little bit, you can see not once did this thing make a lower low on the day until right here. This was the first time on the backside of this move that this thing actually made a lower low. Because again, here, the only reason it uh, pulled back so much here was because it accelerated up away from this support line. You know, if I go, if I go here to, to here, it pretty much accelerated away from that support line. And I mean, I guess I, I, I could draw another little, another little one right here, just so you can see that a little bit more. So, I mean, it accelerated away from that and then came back down to it, but it never, it never really broke through it. It never made a lower low. And that is how you know that you need to be more aggressive on stocks like this. Now, I didn't really have the buying power. And the thing about shorting stocks is you, you would think like a stock that's up a thousand percent on the day. Wow. There's gonna be a lot of downside to short that. Here's the thing. You cannot short with big size stocks that are like two cents. And you're like, David, why is that? Well, I explained this in the Discord today, but in case I wasn't clear, what happens is when you short a stock, no matter the price, you need to have $2.50 per share of that stock available in your account as collateral. So whether you're shorting a stock that is $2 or you're shorting a stock that is two cents, you need to have $2.50 in your account. Which means that if I want to short, I don't know, 100,000 shares of this stock, I need to have 100,000 times $2.50. I need to have $250,000 in my account to be able to short 100,000 shares. Now to buy 100,000, I mean, you buy 100,000 at, uh, at one cent, that's $1,000. That's a $1,000 position. So it's a lot easier to go long on cheap stocks like this versus trying to short them, which, uh, which really stinks. You know, if you have a huge account, yeah, you can make a lot of money shorting 100,000 shares up here or a million shares up there if you had a million dollar account. Uh, but you, if you don't have that, your options are very limited because 10,000 shares, you know, best case scenario, you short at two cents, it goes to zero, you just made 200 bucks. Like, <laughs> like uh, what's the benefit, man? There, there's, there's really no benefit there. So it's kind of pointless. It's kind of pointless, which stinks. So you got to play this from the long side. And uh, I wish I'd been a little bit more aggressive earlier on, but again, I have like basically no settled cash in Schwab, which is so weird, man. You have unlimited buying power, but if you, I mean, you have unlimited shorting power on OTCs, but your buying power is limited to settled cash. Still makes no sense to me, but this is, this is such a, a crazy chart. And I hope, I hope that this turns into MDMP where we had one stock that ran, again, MDMP, I can pull up the chart in case you guys don't know what it looks like. And this stock ran multiple times, but I mean, this, this thing was a multi-day runner that ran from basically one cent, 1.5 cents to 94 cents. And this caused a whole lot of other ones. You know, we go to UAMM. This came in afterwards, man. Another huge runner. And we just had, we had a lot of them. We had a lot of them because of one. So one super big runner can kind of set the precedent. So it's really cool that we have this in the market. And uh, I'm really really hoping that this this does set a new precedent and we start to get some more runners because honestly guys 
felt like nothing was moving today. ILUS uh, had a good day yesterday, and then today just got dumped on, just got sat on by market makers. I wish I had been short here, but there was no huge size on the ask, so I didn't get to take advantage of this. Now, the good thing is, if you wanted to, if you wanted to swing this, it's again getting in that price range where it's a little bit better. You know, buying at 10 cents is better than buying at 12 cents. I would prefer, you know, under nine cents for an entry to swing this, but uh, still a decent swing, I think, with a lot of upside potential, especially as it keeps holding this uh, this kind of uptrend here a little bit. So we'll see what happens. If this breaks out over over 19 cents, I think this thing is going really far. Again, a lot of people who are who are pretty good investors think this thing is going to dollars. So we'll see what happens. Uh, but uh, you know, it, it, it's slow market, guys. It's a slow market. So I hope the uh, I hope that runner changes things for us. HMBL did get the the sell off at open yet again. Uh, as I talked about my my video yesterday, you know, it dumped 20 cents at open. I didn't get a fill here. I didn't want to chase here, and then it faded. I couldn't get a fill here, uh, and I, you know it was pretty lame. Pretty lame most of the day. It was some flipping opportunity too, uh, but I, I messed up this so badly that I kind of gave up on flipping that one. So that's pretty much it, guys. I, I want to make this a shorter video. So hopefully you found it helpful. If you did and you made it to the much shorter end, uh, no cookies for you because this video is a lot shorter. So maybe if I do another longer video, you'll get a cookie if you make it to the end of that one. So that's pretty much it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then. Let's grow better together. Preguntar, bebé, dime por qué te mientes. No puedes esconder todo lo que tú por mí sientes.